Since I last posted a video, I've put five of the six pistons and liners into my engine. I'm going to do the sixth piston today, and I have it sitting right over here in a box, so I'm going to get started here on it. I have the piston out of the box, taking apart the uh, caps real quick here off of the bottom of the piston, and then I'm going to put the bearings on. Wipe down the inside on both sides. Two new 20 thousandths oversized bearings. The tang goes toward the side with the tang on each side. Same with the cap, 20 thousandths as well. All right. Next, I've pre-lubed the O-rings inside with some Dawn dish soap. I'm going to do the same thing over on the piston side, the lower section of it. This is, seems to be recommended by a lot of people. John Deere sells their own lubricant for this, but as long as you don't use oil, because that expands the piston, excuse me, it expands the uh, O-ring, at least the side that faces towards the coolant. That, that's one of the most important things that you, that you shouldn't do. So we're, we're ready to go here. Make sure my front side faces the front of the engine away from me. And gentle. I know ideally I should be doing this with the engine on its bottom, but I don't have an engine stand, so I can't do that. I'm trying to catch it from the back side so the rod doesn't mess up the O-rings here. In fact, I need to move my crankshaft here. So I'm going to do that. The crankshaft's almost top dead center, so it's kind of blocking the rod from coming through. Give it some room. There we go. Okay, now we're 
ready to start hammering it in. So what I've done with this last rod is I put the cap on and I put the bearings on and, and tightened it up just a little bit and then that will keep the rod from knocking around when I push the sleeve up uh, into the block itself here. So we're going to try it a second time. A lot smoother than this one, but that's alright. Now I have the final liner in here and then I'm going to go on the back side and start trying to get that tolerance, see what the uh, width is with the plastic gauge on the uh, bearing surfaces and button it up. Here at the bottom of the engine I have the cap taken off of the the bottom of the rod. I'm going to take a little bit of assembly lube here. Make a little spot with assembly lube and then if I can get it up here place a little piece of plastic gauge right into my assembly lube there. I'm just doing that so that um, it'll hold up when I put it in while it's on its side. And then we're going to torque it to spec and see, see what the tolerance is. I'm using rod bolts that were from the engine before I did the rebuild and these bolts are stretch style bolts so they're really supposed to be one time torque to use so I'm reserving the new ones for the final final torque down all of my connecting rods have had really good tolerance and clearance they've been at 15 ten thousandths or, or 1.5 
thousand so so really tight good numbers and we're going to torque this to 130 foot pounds here Now loosen it. I have a little plastic gauge meter there and a piece of plastic gauge is down below that's smushed on there. We'll try and get it focused here. It looks Right at about that point zero zero one five again, so they're all within a really good clearance and tolerance. Get this the rest of the way cleaned up, and then we can do final torque down. All right, we're ready for final torque down. I'm gonna push the cylinder out a little bit here. And then back. Now will give me enough room to to put some assembly lube on here. And same with the cap side. There we go. Get the rod back into place. And the cap back on. And finally, our new bolts in place. And for the last time, torque it to 130 foot pounds.
and that's the last liner in.